Well, here we are again, back in the shop and still working on the rotisserie. She's looking good though. We got the end frames made. Uh, hanger frames are not done. They're getting close. And then you'll see down there the hanger brackets that go into the, the body. I need to put the nuts on, which I did get some nuts. And uh, so this video today is going to be about uh, pivot points. The pivot point. So the idea is to make a pivot point that is not made of uh, Schedule 80 pipe. There's nothing wrong with the Schedule 80 pipe. I just found it quite pricey and hard to get a hold of the two and a half. I did check some scrap yards around. No, nothing like that laying around that, I, that they would tell me anyway. And I'm not going to go rooting around. It's getting cold out here now. Though it is still very minimal amount of snow up here in the prairies, which is nice. So let's just turn around and we'll uh, look at the book and see what the pivot point the actual distance between the, the tubes that slide up and down, the tube that slides up and down on the frames, and the tube that the, the hanger frame right there slides up and down in. What is the distance between those two pieces? Because I'm going to try to keep my system with the cultivator hubs very close to that. So let's take a look at that. All right, we've got a, a shot of the end frame all assembled. So what I'm trying to do is keep this piece the same, roughly the same as what's in the, uh, in the plan. I, you can, I can go over, I'm building this much heavier than this is, but I want to try to keep it within that. And that distance, near as I can make out, given the, the length of these pipe, one is 10 and a half, the one that's inside this tube, and this one is 10. So I'm assuming it's 10 and a half inches at the shortest distance is 10 and a half. Otherwise that 10 and a half wouldn't fit in there. This may even be a little bit longer than that, but I'm going to say 10 and a half. So I'm going to try to keep mine 10 and a half inches in that distance. Been working on the uh, pivot point a bit here. I've got the hub out, as you can see. The hub is not all the way in the way I want it. Um, so what I have is a length of uh, two and a half, and I had a length of two hitch stock. The uh, hitch stock will fit perfectly inside the uh, two and a half stock that I had. And this two and a half will fit inside the three. So what I'm doing, I'm building up a solid piece. So I welded both ends of this. Uh, I ground out with the die grinder the seam for the two inch. And that allows the, the shaft to go in. Now I'm going to leave a little gap there, but not much. Because the idea is... It's tight in there, so what I'll do is I'll weld it from this end. So if I ever want to recover those, I just chop the end of the tube off. And, and this is more than enough strength to hold it, especially once it gets inside of the uh, inside of here, inside of the three inch. Um, what I did, I put that apparatus inside. Like I said, I welded in, and actually that shaft wasn't nearly as long as I thought. So I just welded it in four places on the inside. It will never come out. And then I put uh, that, in s that whole section inside of this three inch, like I said I was going to do. Now I did encounter, as you can see, there's some shims. I did encounter that it was uh, loose in there. So uh, 18 gauge, scraps of 18 gauge went in. It's even all the way around now. So that'll keep the pivot point even. And I tacked. The corners together so I'll remove the uh, I'm going to remove the shims first I'll tack inside here actually I'll tack in there on the corners and then I'll remove the shims and I'm going to weld a bead right across and you can see I left a lip to weld to and I beveled the edge of the three inch a little bit and that whole apparatus is only, I think, four and a half inches, I believe. Anyway, it gave me lots of room for the hub. I think the hub gives me five and three quarter or so. I'm still within the ten and a half, anyway. So let's get this all welded up. And then we'll tack it on to the three and a half by three and a half uh, square tube for the uh, end frame at receiving the, that receives the end frame. So that's kind of what it's going to look like. I got it set up there kind of just roughly look at it. Uh, I'll be tacking the corners, but first I have to drill the bolt holes.
Well, I think that looks pretty good. Needs a coat of paint. Obviously, that needs to be welded in and painted up. Uh, nuts put on it. So that's just tacked on. I'm going to leave it like that for now. So then I have to cut a two inch ring. I want to, the ring to be able to go right around and be able to have holes in it and bolt through with those studs or other bolts. It doesn't matter. These studs are already here, so why not use them? Um, and a little oversized so I can put notches or holes for a locking mechanism. Well, this is kind of what I was looking for. Uh, not super happy with this particular one. I thought I was cutting it large. It's very hard to, to do a cut like that. I should have had a better uh, jig to go around. Anyway, this will, this will work for the end that doesn't have the, the locking mechanism on it. So the next one I'm going to have to do much better. So what I've done, I clamped them together and i scratching through all these uh, holes here, all the bolt holes. So we can get a. So we can go over the drill press and uh, see what we can do with drilling some holes in there. This is kind of what I'm thinking here. I got this hub made. Um, this will bolt weld on weld right onto this. I can weld these slots back in and most of that slot, probably some filler on that. I can weld from the back side underneath. And uh, I'm going to try to line up one hole as the square with this, with the shaft. So when it's sitting locked, it'll be at 90 degrees, right like that. So that's that. I'm going to pull it back off and I want to clean this up some. It was a terrible freehand job. <laughs> well, holy smokeroni, she's starting to look a lot like a uh, rotisserie now. So, getting into this, what's left to do here? So, we have, uh, other than the mount for the cylinder, I want to put a gusset in here. I have to fill this slot anyway, both sides, so there's no nut here, no bolt here. So I'll put a gusset in here all the way out. This will be chopped off here, and the tube, the hanger bracket tube will go in there. I'll put a gusset in over here. It's a little tight on that bolt, but I think I can make it work some of the welds need to be ground out and redone. That one I don't like at all. And this weld will have to be cleaned up. Uh, on the next one, I'm not gonna slit the center. I'm just gonna slit the corners. This didn't give me any advantage whatsoever. And I'll put a gusset there. No, a gusset there and a gusset there. And this I'll fill in. I'm just trying to think of this here now. Yeah, I could put a gusset there. It would be tight, but I could put a gusset in tight to there. And I could put a gusset in there. Yeah, so I was just thinking about that. So I think that's what I'll do. I'll, I'll build this out. I'll put the gusset a little further away from so I can still still use that knot, or that, that stud rather. But this is the top right here. So this is what we're looking at. So now I was thinking, well, how am I going to lock this? Well, if this is balanced properly, it shouldn't take a lot of pressure on it. So what I think I'll do, I'll put a, a piece of tube on here and I'll put a bolt in from one side. I'll see what I can do. I'll figure something out. So even a bolt down to hold it, just to clamp down on it. We'll think about it. I could, do, I could do one here and I could do one over there so I could clamp two sides and one on the top. So that would be three. That would hold it more than enough. I think one would do it. Anyway, um, it's cooled off now. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to cut this off. Well, actually, I'm going to weld the gussets on first and then cut it off and put the other tube, the, the vertical tube for the hanger on. Well, I got that done. Well, it's not done. Nuts have to go on. Uh, I weld it inside and I weld it on the outside all the way around. Flange has been welded on. I put gussets on. These gussets, I spread them a little bit further for these bolt holes. The top gussets are right on the angle, uh, on the corners of the square tube. So let's see what it looks like on the machine. She's all up and just mocked up for now. I uh, need the gussets on the hanger frame. Uh, put gussets on the hub. I need a gusset on the underneath of the uh, that joint right there and I need to finish that joint so that'll all be done at one time. And some uh, brackets for the jack. 
and of course the nuts and the bolts for locking it down but yeah she's looking pretty good pretty happy with it so now that I have it all kind of where how I think it should look I'll take it all back apart again finish up those things that need to be done and she'll get a coat of paint well there she is right behind me there that's one end frame pretty much done I want to paint it again because I you know got some of the paint burned off uh, welding pieces on I flipped over the arms but hey let's go over and take a look and I'll explain what's going on there she's uh, looking pretty good I took the cylinder off it's laying on the ground right there now because I wanted to show you the the attachment point for the cylinder so that's down here and that's just two pieces of angle iron weld back, welded back to back 5 8 hole I need to get a longer 5 8 bolt oh and that there I was ready to weld nut on and realized I ran out I couldn't get nuts around here so I'm going out tomorrow I have to go out get a windshield put in the car so I'll grab some nuts I'll be close to the city then uh, what else did I do? All these arms, I switched them around and I added uh, bolts and nuts for both ends. Put the gussets on the uh, hanger frame. A little different than the gussets that were in the plan. I had these pieces already made because they came from here. So I figured they'd be just fine. Uh, pivot points put together. Uh, this is the receiving part for the, uh, for the jack. And put a gusset in here. And I showed you earlier the gussets and all the stuff. So I have to repaint this whole thing. But yeah, she's looking pretty good. So I'll get some paint on it. Oh, I was going to mention what the difference is uh, between the two. So the difference is this won't be a locking end. Um, I might put a friction lock on, like I suggested before, just a, a plate, uh, a bar with a nut, or a nut and a bolt rather. But what I did, let me go over, I'll come right back. Let's go over and take a look what I did. Actually, I just brought it over here. So what I have for the other end, in place of this, that was the uh, flange I welded on right here, this one. And that's the flange of the hub. So I made this flange up. So that was, uh, that right there will be replaced on the other end with this. And I cut this out of the plasma color. It needs a uh, cleanup still on it. She's rough. My plasma cutter, hard job cutting three eighths. Your wife, my wife made me a nice template for it. Doesn't burn up too bad, it stayed pretty good, surprisingly enough, the, uh, considering the amount of time it took to burn it. So anyway, that's it. So yeah, so I'll have to, uh, for the other end, I'll cut out the hole for the hub and then put the uh, bolts in, but I'll get around to that. She's looking pretty good. Swing smooth, everything's tight. No major catastrophes, just a little bit more paint. And like I said, that nut down there, because, hey, you know, hard to find nuts, apparently. But yeah, she's a, that's a solid rig. There's no rattles, there's no, <laughs> she's tight. So I, I think having these extra bolts down in here and the tighteners will help with the, the sag, because I've seen them on vehicles that they've, They've sagged like this. This is pretty solid. Hey, anyway, if anybody has seen one of these old 64 to 65 Thunderbirds on a rotisserie, let me know, because I'd love to know how these brackets go on. I'm gonna go with what I know already, and that's what I'm gonna do. But yeah, that's pretty good. So, you're saying, well, you never mounted it on the car yet. Well, I'm not ready to mount it on the car yet. The car actually needs more work before I feel comfortable to actually in it on the on the mounts but uh, in the next video for this rotisserie it won't be the rotisserie video it'll be a mounting video so I'll commit to doing a video of when I mount this car on there now as far as uh, spinning it or anything like that I'll have to see how it reacts I don't know because I didn't finish that rear torque box yet and there's the aprons in the front that need to be done as well but I'm pretty eager to find out how this sucker is going to work. To me, I might start jacking her up and the whole thing collapses. I sure hope not. It's a lot of work for nothing. So 
I'll try in the next video, I'll put together a cost of this thing. I already had this, most of the steel, I had to buy the hubs and holy smoke, speaking of cost, the nuts and bolts for this thing, I think I paid all in around $120 for nuts and bolts and I still need some nuts. Boy, she's expensive, so I mean, if you're buying one of these, you're gonna have to pay that price anyway, but you're gonna pay someone else to put them on. Anyway, I'll get a, an, a value of what it costs to build this thing. I don't know what it is. It's, uh, I'm gonna say it's under $500 my cost. Now I will factor in that blade, a blade, because I had to replace the blade on that chop saw, and the welding rods and all that kind of jazz, and a bit of the paint, because it's all cost, right? But that looks pretty good. What do you guys think? Oh yeah, look at that picture. Look at that, the Thunderbird right there. She's just waiting. Like, like it just wants to go into the back of that Thunderbird. Look at it. Look, it's pointing right at it. All right, everyone. She's looking pretty good. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.